I love the pressure of being live. I feel like we're doing a job that matters. You're live with Lucy Hawkins on BBC World News. This is BBC News, I'm Lucy Hawkins. Our top stories. Air raid sirens sound in Kyiv. Officials say Russia is using self-detonating drones to attack the Ukrainian capital. The victims of the war in Tigray, we look at the struggle to care for the children affected by the conflict in the Ethiopian region. Xi Jinping has been setting out his vision for a third term as president. We'll ask what that might mean for China and for the world. Britain's Prime Minister fights to save her job as members of her own party indicate they no longer have faith in their leader. The Brazilian footballer Neymar arrives at court in Barcelona. He's standing trial for fraud and corruption over his transfer nine years ago. For all of you watching on PBS and around the globe, a very warm welcome. Let's start in Ukraine, which has seen another major attack on Kyiv. This time the capital hit with explosive drones. According to President Zelensky's chief of staff, self-detonating drones supplied by Iran hit the city centre. The mayor of Kyiv, Vitaly Klitschko, said several residential buildings have been damaged. Let's take you live now to Kyiv. We can join our correspondent there, Hugo Bachega, who is back on the roof, Hugo, and you have been in the basement. Does that mean these attacks have stopped for now? Another big day in British politics. Nick, thank you for joining us from outside Westminster there. Stay with us here on BBC World News still to come. He is one of the most famous footballers in the world, but he is facing calls for a prison sentence. We'll look at why Neymar is standing trial in Spain. Our top story here on BBC World News. Air raid sirens have sounded again across Kyiv with reports of drones being used to attack the Ukrainian capital. Let's speak now to Oksana Kovalenko, who is a Ukrainian journalist for the Babylon Online newspaper who joins us from Kyiv. Uh, Oksana, very good to see you. Can you describe what it's like to be in the city when these drones attack? Because it's very different from what you went through, say, last Monday with these big uh, precision guided missiles when they hit the city. The Iguazu Falls, which straddle Brazil and Argentina, have recorded some of their highest water levels because there's been heavy rain in Brazil, up from 1.5 million litres per second to more than 16 million litres per second. The falls are classed as one of the seven new natural wonders of the world, and as you can see from these pictures, they are a very popular tourist attraction. But fears over the fast-moving water meant some of the footpaths were closed on the Brazilian side of the river for the past week. It certainly does look quite dangerous, actually, only opening again this weekend. Some dramatic pictures there of the Aguasu Falls, looking absolutely magnificent with all of that extra water as well. I've never been, I'd love to go. Uh, I've got the headlines for you coming up. I stand with Afghan girls and Afghan women and I want to bring attention to their voices. Нет, Россия не белая, не пушистая. Россия такая, какая она есть. И мы не стыдимся показывать себя такими, какими мы есть. I would like to think that we can see a new range of leadership traits being modeled where kindness isn't seen as weakness. The way to counter Russia is through strength. When big names talk, they talk to the BBC.
you're live with Lucy Hawkins on BBC World News. The Ukrainian capital is under Russian attack once again. Russia is using what are called kamikaze drones to attack central Kyiv. The city's mayor says there are casualties. They destroyed our hometown. They, they killed civilians right now. And uh, we see the every day is terror, is terror attack. It's true, it's a true face of this war. Britain's Prime Minister fights to save her job. Her new finance minister is making an emergency statement to try to reassure markets. The victims of the war in Tigray. We have a report on the struggle to care for the children affected by the conflict in the Ethiopian region. And Xi Jinping's vision for China's future. What will it mean at home and around the world? In the next half hour, we'll take you live to Beijing and to Mogadishu, and we'll hear from our correspondent in Kyiv. Russia has launched another wave of airstrikes against cities in Ukraine. Kyiv once again the target, with at least four buildings in the capital hit. The city's mayor saying they were residential and one person has been killed, three others wounded. There are also reports of casualties in other towns and cities as well. But let's show you the latest pictures we have from Kyiv. Remember, it had been left alone, relatively left alone, by Russia's military for several months. Before attacks were launched on the capital last week, Russia cited a suspected Ukrainian attack on Crimea. And the principal weapons now being used by Russia in its air attacks are these. They're uh, taken this picture in Kyiv just a few hours ago, and what they show is an Iranian made drone. Victor, thank you for joining us. Victor Chinyama from UNICEF in Mogadishu. Thank you. Let's take you now to Iran. There have been more protests against the authorities there. These latest ones triggered by a deadly fire at the Evan prison near Tehran. Officials saying rioting led to the deaths of eight inmates. Demonstrators say they don't believe that version of events and fear many more people may have died. The UN's refugee agency says it's deeply distressed by reports that a group of 92 naked migrants was discovered on Greece's land border with Turkey. The Greek immigration minister tweeted this photo and put the blame on its neighbour. Turkey has dismissed the claims as fake news. The Brazilian footballer Neymar is in court in Spain, standing trial for fraud and corruption. The charges relate to his transfer from Santos in Brazil to Barcelona in 2013. You're live with Lucy Hawkins. Still to come, the UK's Prime Minister battles open dissent from the Tory ranks over her economic policies. Her finance minister is due to announce emergency measures in an effort to reassure the financial markets. And we'll take you live to Beijing to assess what plans Xi Jinping has for China for his third five-year term as the country's leader. Live with Lucy Hawkins. The history of China in the 21st century is increasingly closely linked with President Xi Jinping. He is set to be granted an historic third term in office at the Communist Party Congress, which is being held this week in Beijing. And that means his grip on policy is being watched very closely around the world. In his opening speech to the Congress, President Xi touched on the issue of Taiwan, which sees itself as independent from China, but which China has always claimed as part of its territory. He also insisted that China would continue with its zero COVID policy, which has seen millions of people confined to their homes to prevent the disease from spreading. Live to Beijing, we can talk now to Michael Schumann, who is the author of Superpower Interrupted, the Chinese history of the world. Uh, good to see you. How was the messaging from Xi Jinping at the Congress? Anything new there? Really interesting to talk to you, Michael. Michael Schumann, thank you for joining us from Beijing. We have some breaking news to bring you now. In the last few minutes, we've been hearing from the UK's new finance minister, Jeremy Hunt. He's made a statement about the government's changing financial plans. Good morning. A central responsibility for any government is to do what's necessary for economic stability. So, 
That was Jeremy Hunt, who is the new finance minister, the new chancellor here in the UK. Rob Watson is with me now. Mm. Can we just firstly go back three weeks ago? There was a different chancellor, <laughs> yes. Kwasi Kwarteng. He came out with what was called a mini budget. Is what we've just heard there from Jeremy Hunt essentially almost reversing everything that was in that budget? Yes. They haven't, we've been so lucky to have you with us, guiding us through some of that craziness, Rob. Thank you so much. And Rob talking about the reaction of the markets as well. Luckily, we have another very capable person standing by. Banner's here. He'll be looking at the markets in a moment and all the reaction to that as well. On the website, bbc.com forward slash news, you see a breakdown of everything that Jeremy Hunt has just said. And we will, of course, bring you the latest from the Commons when that happens this afternoon. I'll be back as well in about half an hour's time. See you then. Bye-bye. with Lucy Hawkins on BBC World News. Russia launches another wave of airstrikes against cities across Ukraine. Kyiv was once again targeted, attacked with Russian self-detonating drones. The city's mayor says there have been casualties. They destroyed our hometown. They, they killed civilians right now. And uh, we see the everyday hysteria attack. It's true, it's the uh, true face of this war. Britain's new Chancellor Jeremy Hunt ditches almost all of the cuts from the UK's mini-budget three weeks ago. There are now calls for the new Prime Minister, Liz Truss, to go. Xi Jinping sets out his vision for a third term as president. What might this mean for China and the rest of the world? And the victims of the war in Tigray, we look at the struggle to care for the children affected by the conflict as Ethiopia recommits to peace talks. In the programme, we'll be live in Kyiv, Sydney, Abuja and Seoul. Russia has launched another wave of airstrikes against cities in Ukraine. Kyiv once again targeted, at least four buildings hit there and at least three people have been killed. But we're also getting reports of casualties in other Ukrainian cities and towns. These are some of the latest pictures uh, that we have from Kyiv. Remember it was left alone by Russia's military for several months before the explosions nine days ago on the Kerch Bridge. That's the one that links Russia to the annexed territory of Crimea. And the principal weapons were now being seen being used by Russia in these air attacks are these Iranian made drones. They are called kamikaze or suicide drones because they fly to their target and then detonate. They are relatively slow as well and that makes them vulnerable to being shot down. As you can see here, these are Ukrainian security forces trying to do just that. Well, here's the mayor of Kyiv, Vitaly Klitschko, on those latest attacks. You're live with Lucy Hawkins. Still to come, Britain's new Chancellor Jeremy Hunt ditches almost all of the cuts from the UK's mini-budget from three weeks ago. Will it help the political fortunes of the embattled new Prime Minister Liz Truss? And we'll be speaking about the fire at the Evan prison in Tehran that's resulted in the deaths of eight inmates. Live with Lucy Hawkins. Britain's new finance minister has scrapped almost all of the tax cuts announced by his predecessor in an attempt to reassure financial markets and restore confidence in the government. It comes as Liz Truss remains under immense pressure, with some of her own backbenchers calling on her to resign. Here's a snippet of Jeremy Hunt's statement. Let's take you to Barcelona now. The Brazilian footballing superstar Neymar da Silva is appearing in court in connection with alleged irregularities in his transfer from the Brazilian club Santos to Barcelona 10 years ago. Neymar, who now plays for Paris Saint-Germain, is one of the nine defendants on trial for corruption-related charges. If convicted, he could be jailed for two years and fined nearly $10 million. 
The two candidates in Brazil's runoff presidential election have traded accusations in the first televised debate ahead of the vote to be held in two weeks' time. President Bolsonaro praised Brazil's COVID vaccination program, but the former left-wing leader, Luisa Nacio Lula da Silva, accused President Bolsonaro of causing the deaths of thousands of people by delaying the purchase of vaccines during the pandemic. A number of unidentified gunmen killed 12 people after opening fire in a bar in central Mexico. This is the second mass shooting in the state of Guanajuato in less than a month. The motive behind the shooting was not immediately clear. The region has been convulsed though by brutal turf wars between rival drug gangs in recent years. The death toll from this huge prison fire in Iran on Saturday has risen from four to eight. The blaze breaking out in the Evan prison in Tehran, the country's judiciary saying those who died were prisoners who had been jailed for robbery. But rights groups have called for an independent international investigation as witnesses reported gunfire and tear gas during the fire. With me is Jia Gol from the BBC Persian Service. Do we actually know what's gone on there, Jia? How well, clear is it? We'll have to wait and see what more comes out. Meanwhile, the protests continue across the country as well. Gia, thank you so much for that. Do stay with us. Plenty more to come. We're going to be talking about the hunger, the malnutrition in the Horn of Africa and what's been done to tackle that. Uh, you can also reach me, remember, on Twitter. I'm at Lucy Hawkins, BBC. See you in a few minutes. Bye-bye. live with Lucy Hawkins on BBC World News. Russia launches another wave of airstrikes against cities across Ukraine. Kyiv once again targeted, attacked with Russian self-detonating drones. The city's mayor says there have been casualties. They destroyed our hometown. They, they killed civilians right now. And uh, we see the every day is terror attack. It's true, it's a true face of this war. Britain's new Chancellor Jeremy Hunt ditches almost all of the cuts from the UK's mini-budget three weeks ago. The devastating impact of Somalia's drought, how people are walking for days in search of life-saving help. And members of BTS have confirmed their next gig. They'll fulfil their duty to do military service in South Russia has launched another wave of airstrikes against cities in Ukraine. Kyiv once again targeted, with four buildings being hit and three people killed this time. There are also reports of casualties in other Ukrainian cities and towns. The latest pictures from Kyiv are here. They had been uh, left alone by Russia's military for several months there, before those explosions nine days ago on the Kerch Bridge, which links Russia to the annexed territory of Crimea. The principal weapons now being used by Russia and its airstrikes are these. Uh, this picture was taken in Kyiv just a few hours ago. They are Iranian-made drones called kamikaze or suicide drones because they fly to their target and then detonate. Our correspondent Paul Adams is in Kyiv. He had to take shelter when the air raid sirens sounded early on Monday morning. He and his team are safe, but they sent us this report. Do stay with us here on BBC World News still to come. BTS commit to their military service. We'll take you live to Seoul. live with Lucy Hawkins. Somalia has a long history of droughts, but due to climate change, the intervals between them are getting shorter, and this one is the worst in 40 years. It's estimated that more than half the population, that is nearly 8 million people, are currently living in drought-affected areas, and the situation is getting worse. It's growing into a full-blown famine, where households have no food and children suffer acute malnutrition. Andrew Harding's report comes from Dolo, where people have come in search of life-saving help. But a warning for you, you may find parts of it very difficult to watch. Um, but I think um, fans have, or they at least respect their decision, BTS decision, to well, fulfill uh, their military duty. 
Wong Lee, very good to talk to you. Big news from South Korea. Thank you so much. See you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.